My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our day number 24. We are on page number 92. Yesterday we did the three problems on the left hand column. There are three problems left on this page on the right hand column. Those are the problems we'll do today beginning with 120. Problem number 120 as you can see is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read to you. Then I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to pause the video, do the problem first yourself and then we'll compare your work against the work that we will do together. You know the routine. Here we go. We are told the sum of all integers k such that k falls between negative 26 and positive 24 such that k is greater than negative 26 and less than positive 24 is what? What is the sum of all the integers that fall in this, in, in this interval? That's the question. Go ahead, do it yourself. Oh, here we go. So we're going from negative 26 all the way up to 24, but we do not have an equal sign here. We do not have an equal sign here, which means we cannot include negative 26, we cannot include positive 24. The story will begin with negative 25, and the story is going to end at positive 23. Negative 26, negative 25, negative 24 and so forth negative 23 0 1 2 I do not like it the way it's coming out let me let me redo it I need to put everything in one line negative 25 negative 25, negative 24, negative 23, 0, negative 1, positive 1, all the way up to 22 and 23. There you go. I wanted to put everything in one line purely for the dramatic effects. Purely for the dramatics. So here we go. What we see here is that, what we see here is that from negative 23 to negative, one, negative 1, when you add up all the numbers from negative 23 to negative 1, 0 plays no role obviously, and positive 1 to negative 23, in other words negative 1, in other words negative 1 will cancel out positive 1, negative 2 will cancel out positive 2, so on and so forth, these numbers from here up to here is going to cancel out with these numbers. It's all gone. Therefore, the sum of all the integers that fold in this interval is simply a negative 25 and a negative 24, negative 49. That's the answer. The answer is negative 49. Let's do the next one. 121. We are told that we have a number line. with three points. We have a number line with three points and the number line looks like this. And this is something given to us in the problem itself. The number line is given to us and it looks something like this. Here is the zero they tell us. Here is point R. Here is point S. And here is point T. Let me erase this S. And you will see in a second why I had to do that. We are further told that their coordinates, we are further told that their coordinates have absolute value of R. S and T. Question is how much is their average? 
how much is their average, which is which is why I had to erase the S the way I wrote it because they're using small letters to represent the value of their coordinates in absolute value. These are absolute values. Question is what is their what is their average? Go ahead, do it yourself. Well, here we go. Let's do it on the bottom here. Remember, these are absolute values. So if you were to take their average, if you were to take their average, the coordinate, the value right here is actually negative R because what we were given were the absolute values. This is the absolute value, therefore the coordinate of this guy is negative R because it's on the left hand side of the zero. That's all it is. That's the only trick here. The average is going to be negative r plus s plus 3 divided by 3. That's all. That's how simple it is. And then the answer choice is what you find is s plus t, s plus t minus r divided by 3. That's all. There is absolutely nothing to it at all. Let's do the next one. Before I forget, it will be given the answer choices first because you're going to need the answer choices here. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Those are the answer choices. And here's the question. The question is, we are told that Mark and Anne sold less than N units. We are not told how many units they sold, but we are told we are told that whatever they sold is less than N. We are further told that Mark sold ten less than N. We are told that N sold two less than N. We are also told that each one of them, each sold at least one. In other words, this is uh, the, the possibility that one of these people sold nothing at all or both of them sold nothing at all, we, we're ruling it out. That will be insane. The question is very straightforward. How much is n? Go ahead, do it yourself. See what we can do. We need the room obviously. So we know that the number of units, we know that the number of units that Mark sold and the number of units that Ann sold has to be less than N. We were also told that Mark sold 10 less than N. So the quantity that Mark sold, quantity that Mark sold can be represented as n minus 10 because that's what we are told that he sold 10 less than n. We are also told that n sold 2 less than n. There you go, that's our inequality. All we have to do is solve for inequality and find out which of these five pos numbers are first, which of these five possibilities would work. No, I shouldn't say possibility, these, these, uh, these, uh, which of these five uh, values would work. Let's do it together. So n plus n is 2n. Negative 10 and a negative 2 is going to give us negative 12. That has to be less than n. Bring the n to this side. So n has to be less than bring the 12 to that side. There you go. What we establish is that whatever n is has to be less than 12. If n has to be less than 12, the only answer choice here that is less than 12 is 11. which makes perfect sense, which makes perfect sense if you think about it, let's do it here. Altogether, they sold fewer than 11 units and it turns out 11 minus 10, which means Mark sold only one unit and 11 minus 2, that's 9 units and sold 9 units and therefore they sold less than 11 units. 
that was it. That was the last problem on, the, on that page. Page number 92. We'll meet again tomorrow. And we'll carry on with the next page. Alright? Bye now.